Welcome back to another episode of Naperville Sports Weekly. I'm your host, Josiah Schoenemann. We have another busy slate of games this week, including in boys and girls hoops. We begin with the girls in a DVC matchup as Naperville Central looks to continue its five-game winning streak against Matia Valley, who hopes to get conference win number one on the season. DVC Girls Basketball takes us to Naperville Central as the Red Hawks host the Matia Valley Mustangs. The Red Hawks are soaring, having won six straight and head coach Andrew Nussbaum earning his 700th career victory last week. The Mustangs are still looking for their first DVC victory of the season, however they come in with momentum after winning against South Elgin last week. Trinity Jones opens the scoring here as she grabs the rebound and goes coast to coast gliding past Matia defenders and finishing the layup. Here, Kelly Tumulty gets the rock from Aaron Hackett and shoots for the long two pointer which finally falls after a couple lucky bounces. Mustangs and needed some offense get some here from Renee Pantilla, who receives the pass from Lucy Burke and sinks the corner three-pointer. The Red Hawks end the first quarter, leading the Mustangs 24-13. Mustangs come out in the second quarter looking for points, and Srihi Dugarala helps in those efforts with a three-pointer hitting nothing but net. Central though, keep their foot on the gas. Natalie Jordan receives the pass from Megan Norkett at the top of the key and drives to the paint, finishing off the glass. It's Trinity Jones' world and words us living in it. She does it all here, blocking the shot, grabbing the steal, and taking it all the way to the other end, finishing at the rim. Central goes into the half in control, leading 40-24. The Red Hawks continue to dominate in the third quarter. Jones finds Aaron Hackett cutting inside and she finishes in stride at the basket. Hackett has the hot hand as she drains the three-pointer here from long range. Lucy Burke gets the pass from Renee Valha on the move and she swisses the three-pointer. Red Hawks lead heading into the fourth quarter still up 62-34. The Red Hawks maintain their lead with the help of Megan Norkit draining the deep three-pointer from the corner. Central put the game to bed as Katie Amato drives into the paint and gets the basket to go. Naperville Central cruised to their seventh straight win over Matia Valley, 70-41. School is back in session and winter sports are back on the court as Wabonzi Valley Warriors host the Naperville North Huskies in a DVC midseason showdown. The Warriors look for their second DVC victory after knocking off Neuqua Valley last week, while the Huskies look to move to 3-2 in conference and bounce back after losing a close game against Matia Valley. The game begins in a stalemate as both teams play aggressive defense. Luke Williams, though, turns his defense into offense as he gets the steal and makes the easy layup. Here it's Luke Williams again as he receives the pass from Grant Montanari and drains it from behind the arc. The Huskies again have quick hands as Jack Callstrand deflects the Wabonzi pass, leaving it to Jacob Nolan, who goes up for the finish. The Warriors struggled to get to the hoop early, but was worth the wait as Eric Chetilianov intercepts the cross-court pass and shows off his bunnies with this emphatic slam dunk. Huskies lead after the first quarter 11-5. Wabonzi though are looking to turn the tide. Tyree Coleman's pass is almost intercepted by a Husky defender, but Jackson Langendorf gets the floater to go. Warriors this time pickpocket Naperville North as a turnover results in points for Tyree Coleman who finishes with a nice Euro step and layup at the basket. Coleman here is showing off his vision as he finds Chetelianov underneath the basket. He finishes in style with a nice kiss off the glass. Chetelianov doing it all here in the first half. 
A Huskies turnover leads to a Warriors fast break. Tatilianov gets to the basket as time expires. The halftime score is 19-16 as Wabonzi cuts the deficit down to three in a defensive slugfest. North begins the second half on the attack as Bryce Wells accelerates from the top of the key and finishes at the rim in traffic. Wabonzi stays within striking distance as Matt Sessom here anticipates the missed floater and rises above the Husky defenders to get the putback. Jacob Nolan does some anticipation of his own on the other end as he follows up Luke Williams' missed three-pointer for the putback. Huskies lead at the end of the third quarter, 35-25. The Warriors fight until the very end in what was a scrappy affair. Langendorf here threads the needle to find Shoy Ratke, who finishes off the glass. In the end, the Huskies sealed the victory with three throws made by Luke Williams with only a few seconds left in the game. Naperville North prevails and wins on the road against Wabonzi Valley 45-39 and moves to second place in the conference standings. We got a big DVC matchup at Naperville North High School as the Huskies host the Wabonzi Valley Warriors. Dub V is in third place in the DVC and defeated Oswego in its recent matchup while the Huskies are ahead in second, but lost to Nazareth Academy earlier this week. Both teams look to keep pace with first place Nico Valley. Peyton Fenner has possession for the Huskies as she dishes the rock to an open Abby Drendel, who hits the three-pointer. They are up 6-0. Sydney Fink brings the ball up to court and she bounces it to Abby Holman at the free throw line. She gives it back to Fink on the give and go and she attacks the rim for the layup. Huskies on a roll with a 10-0 lead in the first quarter. North continues to extend its lead as Fink finds Holman again. She has the size advantage against Lily Newton. She turns, pump fakes, and puts it in off the glass. They lead 14-2 at the end of one. Wabonzi trying to make up some ground as Taylor Curry looks and eventually swings it to an open Ariana Garcia Evans. She hits the tray and they trail by nine. Peyton Fenner looks and passes to Abby Drendel who is wide open off the screen. She buries the three and the Huskies lead 17-5. This time, Drendel drives and kicks it out to her teammate Layla Henderson in the corner. She drains this triple and North takes a commanding 26-10 lead into halftime. Warriors trying to respond as Daniela Maporo Coso drives towards the basket and gives it up to Taylor Curry who converts on the floater. Wabonzi trying to hang around. Kalia Reed passes it to Ariana Garcia Evans who dishes it back to Reed and she rattles in this jumper from downtown. Warriors down 31-18. Huskies commit a bad turnover at the other end and Garcia Evans gets the steal. She looks to go all the way to the cup but Layla Henderson spikes the ball out of bounds. Great defensive play as her team leads 39-26 going into the fourth quarter. Warriors not giving up as Taylor Curry has nowhere to go. She dishes it to Hannah Lobb who makes the extra pass to Maporo Coso who knocks down the corner three. They cut the lead to 10 early in the quarter. Maporo Coso looking to pass but it's deflected twice as Sydney Fink gets the steal. She bounces it to Henderson for the easy two and the Huskies extend the lead out to 47-31 with under five minutes left. Peyton Fenner gets past Kalia Reed to get to the rim. She misses the short jumper, but gets her own rebound, goes back up with her left hand, and scores on the and one. North bounces back with a strong performance at home, winning 57-39. Coming up, we check out the Boys Bowling Regionals here on NSW. Hey, do you want to join our rewards program? Collect hot dog points to unlock access to our VIP lounge. That doesn't seem very... Rewarding. With a BMO Savings Builder account, you get a cash reward for every month you save. Wait, so you're going to reward me for saving my own money? You got it. A little incentive to help you get into the habit of saving. That sounds great, but do you have VIPs? Yeah, absolutely. We call them customers. When a bank helps you make real financial progress, that's the BMO effect. What's the matter, boy? What are you trying to tell me? Is something wrong? We live in a safe community, but not a crime-free community. If you see something, say something. Naperville Animal Crime Stoppers. Yes, I'd like to report a case of animal cruelty and neglect. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. 
we head to the lanes for our first postseason action of the winter season with the boys bowling regionals taking place at Lyle Lanes. Naperville Central Boys Bowling is hosting a regional for the first time as Lyle Lanes welcomes the likes of Naperville North, Hinsdale Central, Hinsdale South, Morton and Lyons Township. The top four teams and top ten individuals from non-qualifying teams will advance to sectionals. Hinsdale South rolling the ball well, led by John Luca Dinardi, Matt Camacho, Rudy Flores, and Zachary Williams, all near the top 20. The Hornets are moving on to sectionals with a third place finish. Naperville Central takes the early lead in game one and leads at the midday break. Aiden Lee with an 11-14, finishing 25th overall for the Red Hawks. He's pulling his weight. Naperville North getting a strong performance from David Thompson. In game four, he sets a new personal best with a 2.30. The Husky ends his day in 35th place. The individual leader after the first three games is Sean Lee from Naperville Central. The senior has been dynamite all season as the Red Hawks extend the team lead with three games to go. Lee finishes his day as the third place medalist. Lions Township staying right with Naperville Central. Tommy Hennessy, Drew Escamilla, and Nick Boxell lead the way for the Lions with Hennessy and Escamilla both in the top 12. Another Naperville Central senior hoping to win his first regional plaque is Ethan Rupp. He rolls an 11.83 and finishes in 13th place overall. Naperville North getting a strong finish from the likes of Max Alexandrov. A pair of games over 200 puts the Husky into the top 30 to end his season. Naperville Central is getting ready to put things away in the final games. Tommy Cradenpoth ends his day as the fourth place medalist with a 12.38. But the top bowler not just for the Red Hawks, but in the entire regional is Nate Taverna. The sophomore rolls a 13.61, taking the first place medal over Juan Delgadillo from Kennedy. What a performance. Naperville North finishes in ninth place as a team, but junior Holden Randall is on the brink of making it to sectionals after coming up about 10 pins shy a season ago. A score of 1,112 is enough for the 10th and final sectional qualifying spot as the celebration is on. Naperville Central Boys Bowling sets a new program record and wins the first regional championship in team history. Lions Township, Hinsdale South, and Morton also advance to the sectional, hosted by IC Catholic next Saturday. Another play of the week and it's another Husky making a big defensive play. This time it's Layla Henderson. After Naperville North commits a turnover, Ariana Garcia Evans gets the steal and looks to go coast to coast, but Henderson spikes the ball out of bounds from behind. An impressive defensive play as she shows great instincts to knock it away. Local news is your lifeline. Let the Daily Herald help you navigate your world with solid reporting, good advice, and a much needed diversion or two. Oh yeah, I'll take one of your specials, my man. There you go, princess. Mm. We were there when you explored questionable street meat. Oh. Maybe read the reviews next time? We were there for that. And we're here for everything else. Here it's personal, because we get to know you. The Sanford family is well represented in the sport of bowling in District 203. Sky Sanford is a key member of Naperville Central Girls Bowling, while her father Toby is the head coach of Naperville North. I bring you more on the father and daughter competing in a crosstown rivalry in this feature story, sponsored by Edward L. Marcel. Crosstown matchups between Naperville Central and Naperville North is one of the most intense rivalries in the state of Illinois, which stretches across all sports, including in girls bowling. However, it's not often that a father and daughter have competed on opposing sides in this particular rivalry, but that is exactly the case with Sky and Toby Sanford. Sky is a senior member of the Naperville Central girls bowling team, while her father Toby is the head coach of Naperville North boys bowling. 
prior to Coach Sanford taking the head coaching position for the Huskies in 2017, nobody in the Sanford family thought bowling would become so important to their lives. Bowling's always been something we've done as a family for fun, uh, now and then growing up, but um, I didn't know it would be part of my life being a coach. That's been a great opportunity for me. I didn't know if Sky would choose to do it in high school, and so when, when Sky told us she was interested in going out for the team, well, we were a little surprised. We didn't know that was going to be an interest to her. His team seemed like so much fun. Sometimes we would come and watch him bowl with his team, and it seemed like a lot of fun, like a way to make friends. And I was like, okay, I really like bowling, and they all seem like they have a lot of fun. My dad enjoys it, so like I would probably enjoy it too. So that like influenced me so much to join the team. Despite getting into the sport just before high school, Sky has developed into one of the best bowlers in Illinois. She ended last season as a sectional qualifier and hopes to bring her entire Red Hawks team along with her to that round this year. Her career has been a unique path, but she's enjoyed every step of the way. I was just doing it to have fun and make some friends, but I've learned so much about like being a team and I've had such great experiences like at tournaments that I never thought I would get to experience in like a high school sport. So it, it's been so much fun. It's been so much more than I thought it would be. The crosstown rivalry always makes for an interesting dynamic in the Sanford family. Of course, it involves their fair share of trash talk, but at the end of the day, Skye and her father are supportive of each other and their respective teams. I'm the only Husky in my house now, and uh, everybody else is cheering for Red Hawks, and so they give me a hard time sometimes, and I, and I give it back as well. Well, I always ask him how his games go, but I always want him to do well, but like whenever I hear about the Red Hawks beating him, I, I tease him a little bit, and so, do, so does my brother, because my brother also goes to Central. So we, we all give him a little bit of a hard time being with the Huskies, but like we always want him to do well, and he always cheers us on. Steve Andres, Sky's coach at Neighborville Central, can appreciate the unique prep sports family experience of rooting for a family member in rival colors. His daughter, Abby Andres, might sound like a familiar name in the local area. That's because she was the hero in the girls' soccer state championship last year after her game-winning penalty kick won the 3A title for Matia Valley. Abby's journey in high school wasn't always the hero of the game, you know, and to have that experience was amazing. To watch your kid do something that's really special, and, I, and I'm sure Coach will say something similar about Sky, uh, is just a really cool thing. It's a, just an opportunity for you to kind of live through your kid and, and watch them go for their dreams and, and do some really cool things is really exciting. One of the biggest challenges for the Sanford family is not having to root for a rival school, but finding time to watch each other's teams compete when the boys' and girls' schedules overlap. I'm a little bummed when we have matches the same night she does and I don't get to see her bowls, but I'm always uh, keeping an eye on Twitter to see when Coach posts the scores to see how she's done. I look forward to the part of the season when the boys are wrapped up and I get to go to a lot of Skies matches and uh, see her bowl. While there is still work to do in the bowling season with plenty of games left for Toby and his daughter, he is very proud of how far she has come in her high school career, both as an athlete and as a person. It's been uh, more rewarding just to see her grow, uh, be a leader, uh, be a great sport, and uh, develop lasting friendships. For Naperville Sports Weekly, I'm Josiah Schuneman. Let's go to the mass, take a look at wrestling. First, we check out Matia Valley hosting Naperville Central. Naperville Central Wrestling flies into the conference regular season finale with a 3-1 record with that one loss coming to DeKalb. Now they take on Matia Valley who is still in search for their first DVC win. Starting at 138 pounds, it's Larry Stubish from Central bringing the heat on Mustang Dion Lacey. Stubish grabs his leg and holds him down long enough for the pin to get the ball rolling. To 160 with Red Hawk Gavin Bohan who gets an aggressive double leg takedown on Connor Norton that could have shook up the mats. The bull riding begins from there as Bohan locks up his arm and it's all over in this one. It's Central's Nairi Dabney's turn at 182 pounds as he uses his whole body to get Tyler Funk onto the ground. So what does he do from there? Oh yeah, he pins Funk. Everybody is getting a pin. In the heavyweight, Matias Jesus Rojas doesn't make it easy on Chase Enfield. Low scoring in this match, but Enfield scores enough to get a close win. Central ends the regular season conference slate with a 4-1 record.
On a Thursday night, the Wabonzi Valley Warriors take on the Naperville North Huskies, both teams seeking a big conference victory. The meet starts at 182 pounds as Naperville North's Kyle Gatlin sneaks in two points against Wabonzi's Jacob McBride. Gatlin manages to win the first match of the night for the Huskies. At 220, Naperville North's Alex Kushbach has Jacob Walker on the mat, but Walker escapes for the point. The two wrestlers defend each other for the rest of the match, however, as Walker ends up taking the win. At 106, Husky Sanath Benjamin goes up against A.J. Ramirez. Benjamin takes his opponent down and pins him, making it the first pin of the night for the Huskies. Wrestling at 113 pounds is Ben Messier going for the pin on Wabonzi Valley's Sebastian Cifuentes, and Messier sinks it in to win the match. At 126, Ryan Ney of Naperville North with his first match of the night against Alex Torres, who gets Ney with a double leg takedown. However, Ney comes back with a reverse and finishes the match with a pin. The Warriors are seeking a win at 138 as David Hetas puts Husky Clayton Champion on his back and he's able to secure the pin. Dubby is in for another fight at 145 as Ethan Wojtowicz grapples with Husky Sean Vandenther. Wojtowicz puts Vandenther on his back to go for the pin and he gets it. Unfortunately for the Warriors, the night belongs to the Huskies. At 160, Kai Goodrick has Luke Babar right on his back. While Goodrick is unable to get the pin, he does manage to win the match in the end. Despite some good performances from Wabonzi, Naperville North takes home the victory, 52-18. Up next, we give you boys swimming, here on an SW. We tell everybody's stories, stories big and small. Everybody's story matters to us, and it comes in a variety of shapes and sizes, and that's what makes it so special. We don't always need a big story. Sometimes we want a story that makes us laugh. Sometimes we want a story that we relate to. Sometimes we want to cry with that story. But more importantly, we want to hear the stories about our people in the community. Hey, do you want to join our rewards program? collect hot dog points to unlock access to our VIP lounge. That doesn't seem very... Rewarding. With a BMO Savings Builder account, you get a cash reward for every month you save. Wait, so you're gonna reward me for saving my own money? You got it. A little incentive to help you get into the habit of saving. That sounds great, but do you have VIPs? Yeah, absolutely. We call them customers. When a bank helps you make real financial progress, that's the BMO effect. To cap off our highlights, we jump into the pool for boys swimming as Nequa Valley takes on rival Wabonzi Valley. It's senior night at Nequa Valley as the Wildcats dive into the pool for a DVC meet against District 204 rivals Wabonzi Valley. Starting off with the 200-yard medley relay. Finishing out in front of this one is Dub V's Sean Ball, Nathan Huayne, Tyler Bardak, and Alex Schwartz. There was a tie for second place between Nico Valley's relay in lane 5 and Wabonzi's relay in lane 6. Next up is a 200 freestyle. This race was close throughout, but finishing out in front is Alex Parkinson with a time of 146.18, followed by Luke Martins and Stefan Anderson. Moving on to the 200 yard IM. This race looked like it was going to be close, but Keon Lamb had other ideas, winning this race 11 seconds ahead of Rocky Chan. Time for the shortest race in the 50 freestyle. Like always, this race came down to the wire with Alex Schwartz finishing out in front, 0.45 seconds ahead of Dima Kondrashev. You can see that race means a lot for Schwartz as the Warrior sets a new personal record. Our next race is the 100-yard butterfly. Starting the race out in front is Dub V's Keon Lamb and finishing the race in first is Lamb. Three seconds behind him is Nikwa's Ian Allenbach. Sticking with 100 yards but with the freestyle. This was one of the closest races of the meet as first through third place finished within a second of each other. Touching the wall first is Dima Kondrashev followed by Sam Lohman and Tyler Bardak. It's time for our second relay of the meet with the 200 freestyle relay. 
This was also a close race that came down to the final second where Dub V's relay of Ethan Quayne, Alex Schwartz, Keon Lamb, and Sam Lohman took first place with a time of 129.69. Next up is the backstroke. Two warriors led the way in this race as Tyler Bardak and Sean Ball looks for the win. In the end, it's Bardak who finishes 1.40 seconds ahead of his teammate. The final race will cover is the 100-yard breaststroke. Once again, it's two warriors that are out in front throughout this race in the Hoyn brothers. Ethan touches the wall first, 32 seconds ahead of Nathan. Wabonzi Valley remains perfect in the DVC as they take down Nequa Valley by a score of 101 to 78. It's time for DVC swimming action as the Naperville North Huskies are on the road facing the Matia Valley Mustangs in a big conference clash. We begin the meet with the 200-yard medley relay with the field mostly made up of Husky relay teams and one of them manages to finish in first. The team of Jonathan Wang, Adrian Lamb, Alvin Ng and Trenton Polk wins with a time of 138.99. Next up is another 200-yard race, but this time it's the freestyle with four swimmers competing, which includes two Huskies and two Mustangs. Another North swimmer comes out on top in Ethan Hersher, who finishes at 156.23. Time for the 200-yard individual medley, and it's once again made up of just four swimmers. The visitors get yet another victory as Wang wins his second race on the night with a 158.96. Up next is the 50-yard freestyle, which always makes for close finishes, and this one is no different. The Mustangs finally pick up a win with Jaden Gamilla edging out North's Alvin Ng by just one second. Back to the 200-yard races with the freestyle relay. Three of the four teams are made up of the Huskies, and it's no surprise that one of them takes first. The relay team of Ng, Wang, Adrian Lamb, and Mason Hoffman takes this one with a 131.50. Now we have the 100-yard backstroke with only three swimmers competing in this race. One of them is Gamilla, and once again he takes the victory only this time he wins by a landslide, just under 13 seconds ahead of Husky Alec Porch. Finally, we got the 100-yard breaststroke. It's four swimmers battling for first place this time around, and it's Wang from North getting the win with a time of 58.81. Lamb, who won two races on the night, finishes in second. The Huskies cruise to a 105-56 road victory over the Mustangs. For this play of the week, we got the boys bowling regionals with Nate Taverna making history. He enjoyed an impressive day between the lanes with his best game being in game five with a score of 247. He also shot a 230 or higher in five of his six games. That helped the sophomore become the first individual regional champion for any Naperville bowler with a total of 1361. That also fueled Naperville Central to its first team regional championship with a score of 6166. What a day for Taverna and the Red Hawks. That's it for the show. Join us next week as wrestling reaches its postseason with the DVC championships and boys bowling moves into the sectional round. Don't forget, we're always online. Check us out on our website for extended highlights and stories at nctv17.org. You can also find us on social media at nctv17 on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For Naperville Sports Weekly, I'm Josiah Schuneman. See you next week.